All right, Shalom Makim. Hey, Shalom. Hey, Yah Bashem Al Shai, brought a thumb to my dear brothers, let them out of sisters. Worshiping Yah Bashem Al Shai in spirit and in truth. Our praises to Yahweh Bashem Al Shai and double honor to the apostles over there at Great Millstone. Hey, another current events prophecy and madness. And this one's going to be all about World War III. World War III is on the brink. You know, um, we always tell or we always speak about how there's only two major prophecies that's really need to pass before we out of here. And those two major prophecies is, of course, the MOTB, um, which is the, the grain of rice, all right, the C-hip. And then the other thing that we talk about is that um, World War III has to take place. And in this current events of prophecy, a hey, the Spirit of the Lord led me to none but World War III videos. So that's what we finna talk about here today. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is what, as of recently, the 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 President of the United States been talking about. Let's see what he's talking about here. The idea, the idea that we're gonna send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews. Just understand, and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say, that's called World War III. Okay. The idea, the idea that we're going to send in off. You heard the uh, the Edomite say it itself. You see, the, the elites of the society, they understand what the scriptures say concerning their end and the events that's going to take place. They well understand that when it talks about in Revelation, the 13th chapter, that beast and that system that will be set up, they understand that that's them and their system. They also understand that they will be the ones as participants in World War III. They will be spearheading World War III because World War III is the fight of Edomites versus Edomites. That's what it is over world power and other nations is incorporated with it. This is a uh, Revelation 14. I mean, Revelation 11 and 14. It says the second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And we well understand woe in the scriptures represent the world. The, and when it was in the revelations, it represents the world wars. The second woe was the second world war. And now it said the third woe, the third world war is coming quickly. And just as the president said it. All right, it's called War War Three. Okay, so that's the like the little start off ahead. Now check out this first. Check out um, how America has bases stationed all around the world. Peep this. The United States has the most extensive network of military bases on the planet. In the Caribbean, Washington has a major strategic presence in Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and other locations such as the infamous Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Large and small bases also appear in Central America and parts of South America, giving Washington control over the Caribbean Sea and the entrance to the Gulf of Mexico. The U.S. military presence is especially evident across Europe. Washington maintains around 100 bases in Germany alone and dozens of other facilities in Italy and the UK. In recent years, America has also expanded its military footprint across the African continent, funding many smaller strategic facilities such as airstrips, supply depots, and intelligence outposts you see here. Likewise, the US operates dozens of bases in the Middle East to ensure rapid response to any potential conflict in the region. In an effort to contain China, North Korea, and Russia's Pacific Fleet, Washington funds hundreds of bases across East and Southeast Asia. These include facilities in South Korea, Japan, and other key locations. The United States has... The Brothers, the scriptures say this in Habakkuk chapter 2. It says, Yea, also, because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. And the wine in the scriptures represent his philosophy, his way. He 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 uses his philosophy and his way to patrol the earth. It says he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desirous hell and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. That is the Edomites, the self-proclaimed white people. Now 
The scripture just say, neither he keepeth at home. As you've seen in this very clip here, they got they got they got bases throughout the United States states sold up. All in the islands, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, sold up. Okay? All over in Africa, sold up. South America, sold up. Central America, sold up. You know? All in Europe. Hundreds of different bases everywhere for war. All the way till you get to the south, the, 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 the east, the southeast China. And this dude keep it not at home. He have his NBC set up everywhere. And that's the Heavenly Father ultimately because y'all going to be fighting each other. You know? You nations... Starting with you, Edomites, y'all gonna fight each other. The Lord gonna make y'all fight each other, man. You know? So, this video we just played showing you how America has bases everywhere. Embassies everywhere. Now, check out this next clip of what Russia has. Silos. Russia's land-based ICBM force consists of four missiles. 46 SS-18 Satans, armed with one or two 800 kiloton MERV warheads per missile. Two SS-19 Mod 4s, armed with one 550 kiloton hypersonic glide vehicle warhead per missile. 60 SS-27 Mod 1s, armed with one 800 kiloton warhead per missile. And 18 SS-27 Mod 2s, armed with up to four 550 kiloton MERV warheads per missile. When launched, these missiles travel at speeds of over 16,000 miles per hour, have ranges of up to 10,000 miles, and typically reach their target or targets in around 30 minutes. Together, these 126 missiles carry 211 warheads, representing 15% of the strategic nuclear weapons currently deployed by Russia. When added up, Russia's land-based ICBM force can deliver a total explosive yield of 150,000 kilotons, or 19,000 times the destructive power of the bomb dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. As with all things, there are advantages and disadvantages when attacking Russia's silo-based ICBMs. The primary advantage is that their locations are commonly known, and therefore they can be easily targeted. The primary disadvantage of attacking Russian ICBM silos is their fast launch time. Like the U.S. ICBM force, they can be quickly launched. As a result, they need to be the first target hit in a first strike. Secondly, Russia's ICBM silos are a high threat due to their long-range targeting ability and high weapon payload. It's believed that Russia's silo-based ICBMs are exclusively reserved for targets in the U.S. Furthermore, destroying Russia's entire ICBM force in a preemptive strike can be problematic. When attacking Russia's silo-based ICBMs with nuclear weapons, one of the most critical metrics a U.S. war planner must determine is silo You know, you brothers and sisters see it. Let me, let me, I'm gonna I'm I'm slide back. That, that picture was so beautiful. Look at that. Look at this. They showing how... They said how Russia's majority of their missiles are targeted over here in America. Now look at the look at the imagery. That's how that's how it's going to look in that day. Right to America, missiles coming from the east and the west. And that's going to be the result of World War 3. It's going to be it's going to end in nuclear destruction and Yahweh Shai our Lord returning. So some of the facts and point that he gave was that these missiles travel up to 16,000 miles per uh, 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 I believe he said 16,000 miles per hour getting to their targets in 30 minutes. He said one of those missiles could hold up to 20, 211 warheads. You know? And that these missiles are 19,000 more, 19,000 times more stronger than the, 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 the bombs they dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And this is that missile. That's your Hubble Bashim Shai's missile, man. That's the Lord's missile. How do we know that? Because the scriptures tell us that the Heavenly Father created the Smith. 
All right, but that blow up the coals in the fire. Isaiah 54 and 16, it says, Behold, I have created the smith that blew up the coals in the fire and that bring it forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And that's that nuclear missile. The Heavenly Father gave these scientists, you damn Edomites, he gave his technology so that, like I said, he created the waster to destroy. It's going to destroy America is going to be out of there, according to the scriptures. It's out of there. And certain other places of, of the of, of the world are going to be destroyed with this nuclear destruction, man. But if you if you hear what the points he was saying, they got all they got they got they got a they got a, basically an abundance of missiles. And that's because the Heavenly Father gave them this 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 technology and this capability because it's gonna result in the Heavenly Father's prophecy passing. Of World War Three and nuclear destruction. Matter of fact, the missiles is known as the Heavenly Father's horsemen, or his army. This is Revelation nine and seventeen. It says, "And thus I saw the horses in a vision. Horses in the power. Rep I mean, horses in the scriptures represent power. So in his vision, John the Revelator is seeing power. What he was seeing was the missile. It says, and them that sat on them." Having breastplates of fire and adjacent and brimstone. And the head of the horses was like the heads of lions. And out of the mouse issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So what horse do you know got a head of a lion? No. John is using comparisons of what he had back then to describe what he was seeing in the future that's going to take place now. And what he's seen was the missiles and he's seen the destruction of the missiles and how in the in the warhead in the tip of the missile is the warheads and that's why he said the heads were like lions because a lion a lion's mouth is where strength is at you know and it says and out of their mouths issue fire when when that warhead explode that tip of that missile explode fire comes out of it it's smoke and brimstone. You get the mushroom cloud and you get all the destruction that takes place. That's what John was seeing. It says, by these three was the third part of men killed. Esau, Edom is the third part of men. Okay? The sons of the wicked. It says, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Because over here in the United States, the whole United States will be get will get swept off of the mat. Period. Gone. Out of there. It says, for their power is in their mouth, in their in, in their tails. Because the, the, the power is in a warhead. And the way that the, the missiles even get to travel is through the fire that come out of the tail. Alright? This is what he's seeing. It says, for their tails were like were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt because of, when you look at a missile it looked like a flying snake and we know that snake you get bit by a snake it hurts you get hit by a, a nuclear blast radius you will die heavenly father is not playing with this technology he gave is doing is all to bring forth prophecy. Amos 9 and 8 says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saying, I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the, saith the Lord. So the Heavenly Father is going to destroy America from off the face of the earth, the sinful kingdom. But he's going to deliver the Israelites, the one third out of, the, out of America. So, man, I was looking at this stuff. I'm like, damn, the Lord is not playing with what he gave this Edomite. You, 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 you Edomites, you're going to fight each other and destroy your own selves. That's why the scriptures say he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. You thinking to use those missiles for your advantage, but no, sadly, you're going to be destroyed by them. Let's see um, what we have here. Let me see. Uh, here we go. For the 
first 10 minutes and they don't just get to the point. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for you today. All I'm going to say is make sure you have your bug out bags ready to go and your bunkers, if you're privy enough to have one, locked and loaded because we have some big, big news to break today and I can't cram it all into the first minute. So you're going to have to stick with me till the end. All right. Now we have Russian warships armed with hypersonic nuclear missiles parked just off the east coast of the United States. I repeat, Russian warship armed with hypersonic nuclear missiles, just like Medvedev threatened two weeks ago, apparently now is a reality, according to my sources. Russian warship with unstoppable 7,000 mile hypersonic missiles sails towards the US and soon to be in strike range. So this was again, more verification of what uh, Canadian prepper through Green Greggs, through uh, Wheel Barger were saying, and it looks like that may be accurate. Now, this is also getting information roughly from Telegram channels and others, uh, Russian Telegram channels. It says a Russian warship armed with unstoppable hypersonic missiles is sailing towards the U.S. coast in a show of strength, reports claim. The guided missile frigate Admiral Gorshkov, which have been closely monitored by NATO uh, navies on its maiden voyage, armed with the Zircon weapons. It says an unconfirmed Russian Telegram channel reports that it had spotted on radar in neutral waters of the Atlantic Ocean at an effective salvo launch distance from the U.S. coast. Now, if this were to do something, obviously we have talked about a possible, you know, uh, Pearl Harbor 2.0 type of thing happening to draw. Yeah, he ain't talking about nothing at the end of it, but nonetheless, breaking news. We, we sitting here talking about how America have bases everywhere. Russia have all type of nuclear missiles that aim towards America. The president of the United States is talking about World War III is here and all this extra stuff. Russia's moving their their military forces off the east coast of the United States. And you got these different uh, preppers and people that's reporting on it all scared and tell you to get in your bunkers. And The war, the World War III is here. It just ain't going to start initiating, super taking place until the MOTB, Revelation 13 chapter, come into play. Because... The end of World War III is that everything will be destroyed. That's like the uh, the Heavenly Father final life. He's sweeping everything into the dustpan and then he throw it in the trash. That's the nuclear missile. But if there's nothing, to, if there's no people in America, everything is already burnt, then how could the prophecy play out of the MOTB being made mandatory? You see? It has to be the MOTB first and then the war uh, finalizing it itself, you know, because remember, Yahweh Shemuel Shai is not gonna let one jot or tittle pass until all be fulfilled. But nonetheless, you hear these guys talking about the war. You know, Russia's pulling up on the East Coast. This Joel three and nine. It says, "Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles: Prepare war. Wake up the mighty man. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up." Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hook into spears and let the weak say I'm strong. That's what the Lord's doing with these nations. He's getting you ready to, to fight each other. While us Israelites over here in America and under slavery, we're going to be getting delivered by our God. He's going to be sending his angels and protecting us and, and, all, and, all, and all that beautiful blessedness. And you nations, you're going to be fighting while we getting set in order. You know, and that's what you nations get because nobody's cared about the Negro, Latino, and Native American man. Nobody. You know, so you fight each other while we waiting on the Lord. You know, that's our attitude towards your war. Let's play this next thing we have here. Russia is threatening to start a nuclear war if it's defeated. Let's start this over. Russia is threatening to start a nuclear war if it's defeated by Ukraine. Former Russian president and Putin ally Dmitry Medvedev has warned the world it'll be a war like no other, saying nuclear powers do not lose major conflicts on which their fate depends. This week, Putin gave orders to expand the Russian army by about 300,000 people, which will see the number of serving soldiers swell to 1.5 million over the next three years. Russia is threatening to start a nuclear war if it's defeated. You hear it? The rumors of war. 
The scriptures talk about that in Matthew the 24th chapter. It just wars in the air <laughs> because the prophecy has to come to pass. So the Heavenly Father is developing a war. And at the same time, he's developing the MOTB right alongside it. These things are happening side by side. You know, and you hear her. Uh, Russia is threatening and yeah, because the Lord is putting it in the mind of these 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 uh, nations. Isaiah 34 and 1 tells us, it says, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all the things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter because the heavenly father going to have all y'all fighting each other. And then when Yahweh Shai come back, our Lord in the second coming, when he pull up, you nations going to come together and fight against our Lord. That's how the prophecy go. And the Lord, going he going to smoke you. You think you're bad and tough now? No, the Lord going to show you who bad and tough. Y'all all, all going to be destroyed. It says their slain also should be cast out and their stink should come up out of their carcasses and their mountains should be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved because the Lord going to be here. Yahweh Shai going to be here and nuclear missiles going to be getting shot around the earth at the same time. And the Lord going to be destroying you, you, you nation's armies with the chariots and the, the laser beams that come from the chariot chariots all at the same time. While we'll get, while we're getting delivered, it's going to be a cluster of things. It says and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down. As a leaf that falleth from the vine, and as a fallen fig from the fig tree. For my sword should be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. So Idumia is Edom. Esau Edom. Look up the word. Okay? The Greek way of saying Edom is Idumia. So the Lord has this sword coming down, these nuclear destruction to come down to destroy Edom. And that includes the Russian Edomite. Because all you, you self-proclaimed white people, all y'all are Edomites. If your line don't go back, if you're not a uh, uh, um, uh, a confusion of, uh, uh, well, I would say if you're not an Israelite that look like another nation. If your line go back to Esau, Edom, you, this judgment is for you, Period. The Israelite foreigners that look like other nations. If you look like an Edomite, you're gonna be, you gonna, be, you know, and the Lord is dealing with you. You're gonna be delivered. You're gonna get your pigment back. But all the Edomites, they're finished, you know. So, let's see what we have here. Last, I believe, uh, did I play it yet? Let me see. Uh... Institute for International Science and Technology Policy at the Elliott School of International Affairs at the George Washington University. Mary Robinson, Chair of the Elders and former President of Ireland. Elbeck Dorsch Chakia, Member of the Elders and former Prime Minister and President of Mongolia. Today, the members of the Science and Security Board move the hands of the Doomsday Clock forward, largely, though not exclusively, because of the mounting dangers in the war in Ukraine. We move the clock forward the closest it has ever been to midnight. It is now 90 seconds to midnight. You see it, brothers, and now they bring it out that doomsday clock crap. I mean, I think it's crap, man. Here it is. Nobody don't know the time or the day. That's that's what the scriptures tell us. We don't know when the Lord going to going to set things off and send back His beloved Son Yahweh Shai. We have no idea, you know. But these devils do have their mind towards wanting to get their new world order done and to reset, you know, the global reset. So they 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 base it on this clock that they created. So now they're saying it's closer than ever. Ninety seconds. What the hell is 90 seconds in their, in their counting time? What the hell does that even mean? But one thing we do know, it's closer than ever. 
We talked about, we just showed you about all this war, that this war talk and this missile talk. You know? And now these devils is moving a doom day's clock. And when you look up the word doom, if you ever have you ever never looked up the word doom, when you look up the word doom, it means um judgment. I'm right here on the etymology, judgment. Okay? It says, yeah, basically that's what it means. Judgment, fate, ruin, destruction. It says a decision determined in fate or fortune. Destiny. And the doom, doomsday, the doom really is towards Esau Edom because you're going to lose your kingdom. All right? You're going to be judged or your fate is going to happen to you. You're, you're going to be ruined. Or the Lord finna determine what he's going to do with you, man. You see? All right? Now, this is Revelation 12 or 12 because these devils know. That's why they moved the, the thing because they know they got a but or what? A short time. Revelation 12 or 12. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devils come down unto you having great wrath because he know that he have but a short time. So that's why they moving that damn clock because they know that they they their their time is ticking on them. Damn weird devils. Man, look at them, man. Look at you Edomites, man. You know? You over here running the world to crap. You didn't you 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 got everything off balance. You got war all in the air. And you you try to make it seem like this is a uh this is all the people that's causing this. No, this is you. You eat them. I says you that's causing all this stuff. And it's the Heavenly Father using you because you're gonna be the Heavenly Father chose you to make it to make his name great. When he destroy you, he's gonna make his name top the um the reputation of Egypt. And that and that's a reward for you, Edomites, for your wickedness. That the Heavenly Father is going to take all his anger out on you to make himself a name. And you're going to be destroyed in the process. That's that's a reward for your wickedness. Hey, but with that, hey, through the spirit of power, y'all about Shemel Shai, hey, throw out for you, brethren, who stopped by. And I hope that was edifying to you, brethren, and a lot of World War III talk. And, um, hey, we almost out of this thing. World War III is here. MOTB is here. We're just waiting for the Lord to, to finalize this thing. Hey, so with that, hey, y'all about Shemel Shai, Baka Thumb. To my dear brothers out there, stay strong. Shalom.